Hello everyone and welcome to this month's In the Community TV special. I'm your host, Jennifer Beck. Our guest this month is Bridget Erdman. Bridget is a wife, a daughter, a mother, an author, and the daughter of the one true king. Bridget recently released the Bible study, Titus, Sound Doctrine and Faith. Well, today we're going to talk with Bridget about the important components to be learned in the book of Titus. And I'm also going to ask her about motherhood. Bridget is raising three young children in our current morally shifting society. I am thrilled to have Bridget Erdman with us today at TV 44. Bridget, as I just mentioned, Bridget is a wife. She's a mother, she's a daughter, she's a daughter of the <coughs> one true king, and she is an author of this study, Titus, Sound, Doctrine, and Faith. Yes, with a beautiful flower on the front. Thank you. So let's start out by talking about this, this study. Um, it took you over four years. It did. To get this together. It did, between raising three kids and yeah, it took, a, it was a process. Why Titus? Why did you choose the book of Titus? Um, I was going through different Bible studies that I wanted to work on myself and um, God kept leading me to Titus. And I, so I started looking at different Bible studies online of, about Titus, and I really couldn't find anything mm. that really spoke to me. And then I just kind of heard God say, just write one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> nope, not doing it. He was like, nope, I'm, I've got this. You just need to write it. So I was like, all right, we'll dive into it and see what happens. So how did that work? Um, first of all, Hearing from God is the key to all things and then saying yes. Yes. Uh, so when you started that, what was it like? Did you start going through the book of Titus yourself and it started coming to you? How, how did it all work out? Um, I first, by just reading the book of Titus in the Bible, and then I started looking up different um, backgrounds of Paul and just finding different just books about it. Um, not so much studies, but um, like theology books and just kind of picking pieces a part of that and um, just going verse by verse and seeing what, what God said. Like, yep, that needs to be in there. Take notes on that. So we're gonna go through, uh, we weren't gonna go through it all because what you need to do <laughs> is buy it and go through it yourself. But we are gonna talk about it in just a little bit. Before we do that, tell me, get me excited about the book of Titus. Why is this a book that we need to be studying? It's a short book. It's easy to get through but it's packed full of everything. Um, I want to say the biggest thing is that he, Paul was writing to Titus in Crete and it's full of sinners and ugly people. And so he sent Titus to Crete to um, just to speak to them mm -hmm. and create mm -hmm. communities and to spread Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and our world is starting to look a lot more like that today. I was just gonna, as you were saying that, I'm thinking, <laughs> hmm, that's how we need to be living our lives, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so we're gonna dive in here really quickly. It's not a long book, it's a Bible study. Um, a lot of elements in here that I really like about this because Bridget, you do focus on the book of Titus, but as you mentioned, you bring in other, a lot of other scripture is brought in with yeah. this and in your own personal experiences as well. But it's written in six different sessions. Well, it says chapters, but you know, I've seen you use the word sessions. Yeah. So how is this book intended to be used? Um, so when I was leading the Bible studies at my church, we would go through just short passages each week. So I kind of set it up like that to where um, you can read it with a group or by yourself one week and then spend a whole week just mulling over it mm -hmm. and really diving in to the scriptures that it's going through that week. The chapters here are chapter one, Paul's background, chapter two, expanding the church in Crete, chapter three, order, chapter four, serving your master, chapter five, doing what is good, and chapter six, next laid plans. And then in each, each session, you start out by like, here we have Paul's background, this is the beginning. Mm -hmm. We get the background. A lot of, I really like how you, you explained it in really good modern day terms, I guess. Yeah. You, you, you make it very easy to follow, make it very interesting to follow, but then you always move into a, kind of like an action step. Yeah. You know, it's not just something to read, it's something to really impact our lives. Right, I wanted it to definitely be applied 
to everybody's life where they're at right now and um, how they can be involved in their church, how they can be involved in their children's lives, their mm. family's lives. Um, just taking to let everybody know that the Bible is still alive today. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And very applicable for, yes. like you said, we're living in a time that could be considered similar in some ways to Crete. Yeah. And uh, God has put us here for a purpose. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm moving now to page 11 in session two. So we're learning about expanding the church in Crete. But then it gets to the point where we're not just talking about Crete. You're asking, what do you believe your purpose is on earth? What are some lessons you have learned from hard circumstances in life? Yeah. So I like how you, you almost, I won't say force, that's a bad word, but you encourage the reader to really ponder how God has used all things. Yes. Um, why do you think that's important to have in something like this? Um. You know, instead of just reading, we can read the Bible all day long <laughs> right. and then we can just say, oh, that was nice, that was good. Yes. But you know, this is, you, you've got, there are lines Yes, right in to it. To write in <laughs> what the hard circumstances are in your life. Because God can use all things for good, can't he? He absolutely can. And um, there's a lot of things that have come up in my life that I can look back on and say, God definitely made me stronger through that. Mm -hmm. And I learned this from that situation. So let's take what I learned that God placed in my life so that I can move forward and help others because of it. Mm, yeah, that's, that's good. It's important to remember. In that same session, you then move on to um, encourage people to spend some time alone with God to talk to him about what he needs us to be doing. So you move from, I, I, there's a lot of mental, mental reflection yes. that you'll find through this. Yep. I mean, and I had to do a lot of that myself uh, during the writing process. Um, to just get through it. I, I took a lot of time to just sit with the word and it was good. You know, you talk about how four years in the writing process, because of practical issues, you're raising your children, various mm -hmm. things. Yep. But I would imagine you can look back on that four year process and even see you are a different person through oh, all yes. of that. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's Order is the next one, session three. And I think that's one of the things that I, I, I like everything about this, um, this, this Bible study. But once we get to session three with order, I felt like it really, really became practical and necessary for we Christians to sit down and think about the order that God has placed in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. How do you that's... feel that it is valuable? You mentioned sound doctrine and faith. You know, why is it so important for us to have sound doctrine and order and all of these important things in our daily lives? Because we need to look back and see what God has done for mm -hmm. us and um, just know his truth and then having the faith to believe that he does work all things for good. Mm -hmm. And if we have order in life, it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah, God has a reason behind it. Exactly. <laughs> So where can this be uh, purchased? How can people purchase this? Um, Amazon is a big one. Okay. Um, Barnes and Noble has it online. Um, I've also noticed that Walmart has it online. So that was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. um, there was a couple others as well. I can't remember them right now, but Amazon and Barnes and Noble were the big ones. So we're not finished with the interview yet because I wanna ask her some other questions. But before we get there, I wanna remind you again, the book is Titus, Sound Doctrine and Faith, written by Bridget Erdman, uh, inspired by the Word of God, because there's lots of Word of God, lots of yes. Scripture in here. And I encourage you to, to pick this up. It's only 34, 35 pages, including the acknowledgements. Yes. Which I like because I'm a busy person. Right. And it doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. It feels very, very, yes. very doable. It can be read all in one day but I suggest you go through it slower. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of, you've mentioned the word slow, and at the beginning, I talked a little bit about her resume, in a sense, included the word mother. You're a mother of three active kids. There's probably oh, yes. not a slow, not a lot of slow in not your house, I would slow. imagine. <laughs> if you, let's talk a little bit about what it's like to, um, to raise kids in our society with all of the things that are are coming at. What are some things that you think mothers have to deal with now? Is you can't really shield your kids 
right. but you definitely want to guide them. Yes. Um, I heard one of my friends calling it growing in a greenhouse. Mm. We're growing our kids in a greenhouse. Um, not so much trying to shelter, shelter them, but giving them the filters to go out into the world. So if they can't grow in Christ with mm. us, they can't filter what's out there that we can't shield them from. So that's definitely been a lot of conversations and communication in the family. Now, you know, we've heard for years, you can't just rely on Sunday morning church to be the source right. for your children to, to grow up and know about Christ. Are there any practical daily things that you could recommend to moms or even grandparents who are gonna have their kids this summer that they could do just to make a Christian life a normal daily act, just how it is every day? Um, well, every day before bed for us, I have, we have the Bible app on our phone and they have devotions for kids that are like six days long. Hmm. And they have little YouTube videos that go along with it that they break it down. We've started doing that recently. So before bed, we pull up day whatever of, and then we talk about it. Hmm. And then we pray before bed. And it's every discipline, every conversation that we have that needs an explanation behind it. Um, Cause my oldest is nine. So there's a lot of explaining to mm -hmm. do. And we try to lead it all back to what it said in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And how early would you start something like that with your kids? Well, my youngest is four and we've been doing it since, well, the prayers we've been doing since the day he was born. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's important. How is it, how is it as a mother to be raising kids um, in this time? You know, we have social media, your kids are young yet, but there are nine-year-olds out there who, yes. you know, have, have their phones and are on social media all the time. How is it to be, I mean, my, my youngest is 19, right. so we have, our generation <laughs> is a little different. Yeah. What is it like raising kids right now? Um, it's easy in some aspects because we homeschool. So our kids don't have a lot of outside influence besides friends that we know from church. Mm -hmm. And um, and you do karate and you do other things. Yes. So you do other right. activities, yeah. Yes. And um, yeah, we stay active in a lot of things, but we, we encourage vacation Bible schools. We encourage um, everything that leads back to the Bible. Um, we currently live with my grandmother, who this book is dedicated to. Mm. And... Um, She's, she'll be 98 in a couple weeks. And she does her own scriptures, so they see it just unfolding in the house. Mm. That that's, that's part of our life, that's what we do. And if we can rely on that, then what we do outside of the home can be easier for you. What values are you seeing with your, your kids growing up in a home with an, another generation, an older generation? That's, that's something that not all American families experience. Right. It's, there's been some learning curves in the process, but it's been good. We've definitely quieted as a family. Um, we know when to take situations out of the house mm. so that we can um, have a lot of energy outside rather than being crazy inside. Um, but just hearing a lot of the stories and she's included in games and balloon tosses and stuff like that, it's been fun. So it sounds to me like you are recognizing the value of time with family and making that purposeful. Oh yes. With, with multiple generations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What a joy probably see your youngest daughter with your grandmother, with your grandmother. My grandmother, right who there. she's named after. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> yes. That's great. So the book is Titus, Sound, Doctrine, and Faith by Bridget Erdman, mother of three, as you heard, um, working to raise her children to love the Lord, which is what we all desire for our yes. children, of course. What's the future? Do you have a plans for more books? I know you said you're homeschooling your kids, <laughs> so maybe you'll write some homeschooling books first. Maybe. I'm just waiting on, I feel like right now is a period of rest. Mm. So when he's ready to move us to the next period, there might be another book. Otherwise, we'll just see where God leads us. Well, and rest is part of God's plan. Yes. That's good. That's good. Okay, one more question before we go, because you mentioned rest. How, I, 
have this conversation with my husband at home about the value of <laughs> the importance of rest. Can you encourage our viewers to be willing to rest? Is there anything you can say about that? Why we should we should be willing to do that? Because you could easily fill that time. You could have an excuse oh, to not yeah. rest. But why yeah. is rest important? You can't hear from God if you're not resting in Him. <laughs> I knew that's, I was supposed to ask that's that it. question. That's it. That's it. Wow. All right. Bridget Erdman, Titus, Sound Doctrine and Faith. You can find it on all the places on the screen mentioned here. And thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Her kids are here. Her husband's here too, but her kids are here and you haven't even heard them, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Some things he's doing are working. Thank you so much for being with us here on TV 44. Thanks. Thanks, Bridget, for coming into the studio and talking with us about your book and about motherhood. Now for a little bit of a throwback. Years ago, I produced a show called Faith and Friends. Maybe you remember it. A lot of fun, a lot of focus, always Jesus. Well, we're going to have a fun look back at one of our segments from back during our Faith and Friends era. Today's health topic, increasing brain power. How many of us need more brain power? I'm sure every single one of you at some point in the day thinks, oh, I'm going to grab that cup of coffee. Are there other ways, natural ways, ongoing ways, that you can help your brain function better? Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness Center joins us again this week to talk about that very topic. How's your brain doing? Is it rearing and ready to go? It always is. I'm drinking my green tea like crazy. <laughs> I've had my coconut oil this morning. I'm ready to give some good thought and information today. All right, so share with us some of your nuggets, golden nuggets on how we can improve our brain functioning. You know, I think that if we just focus on the fact that there's lots of things in our home that we can do and we just have to be intentional. It doesn't happen. If you want to increase your brain power, you can do that, but you have to make some lifestyle choices to make that happen. There's three easy things and it's going to be black tea, ginger, and coconut oil. Um, most are readily available. If you're not used to coconut oil, it may be something you're going to run out the store and get after we finish talking mm. here today. Mm. Um, the first one is black tea. We know that our IQ uh, stays the same, you know, once we test are tested for that. However, once you be, have dementia and, and Alzheimer's, your IQ lessens. You, it's just not as powerful. The number isn't as high. You can't function as well. So if you want to maintain that IQ, you also want to increase your focus and your attention. You need to be drinking black tea every day. The Journal of Nutritional and Neuroscience uh, founds that it helps prote protect our intelligence level. It is, and we often think about black tea of having caffeine and mm -hmm. causing jitters, and maybe we can't think. The, the truth of that is it contains something called tannins, mm. which will lessen the jitters, and L-theanine. And L-theanine is a wonderful calming uh, agent that helps with our neurotransmitters to allow us to have a calmer brain and allow signals to jump across the synapses in our brain. Mm. So L-theanine is in the black tea. Uh, studies have found that if you drink black tea uh, within 20 minutes, you will have, uh, you'll do better on cognitive testing. Wow. So you're in college, you're getting ready for finals, you need to be drinking black tea before you're testing to Un make sure. Unsweetened. Unsweetened. Now, you can put a little honey in that uh, or a little stevia, some natural vegetable sweetener, if you have to do that because honey is a natural antibiotic and I'm always concerned about people's immune system. So a little honey would be okay, but obviously without it is best. <laughs> All right, black tea, that's your number one item that you want to add to your list for your brain function to improve. Next one is ginger. ginger. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it helps with your working memory um, and your reaction time. There was a two-month study with, that was done in the Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmacology, and it found that ginger has an ingredient called gingerol. And it ups the flow of blood and oxygen into the brain. It calms stressed adrenals. It protects the blood-brain barrier. And it will al allow you to respond quicker. So you sometimes you have a hard time finding that word. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking about what it is I need to do next or my mm -hmm. foggy thinking, I don't know what direction to go. If you're using ginger every day, that will eliminate those problems. It's best to use fresh ginger and you peel the bark off of it and you grate a little bit off. You need one teaspoon of grated ginger a day will improve your, your thought process, your foggy thinking, and your memory. You can and be creative with that. You can put it in tea, make a tea out of it. Um, I like to put it with my salads in my salad mm. dressing, 
a little zip to the dressing um, in yogurt, sprinkle on some fruit. Um, ginger can be used anyway. And of course, we're talking about, you find it in your produce section. A lot of times it's next to where the fresh herbs will be found. It, 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 it looks like a, well, it comes in all shapes and sizes. It does. You're going to buy Each this funny looking. brown, funny looking root. Yes, it's a root. It's a root. Take it home, and like she said, you take off the peel, and that, and you can, you can use that inside. Great. If that sounds like too much work, you can buy the ginger powder, and you can use that instead. But we always know fresher is better, mm -hmm. and you get more of the insides and ingredients in the fresh ginger root. Oh, and once you you. Uh, uh, sh even cutting it, just the aroma that good. comes out. Wow, yes, I'm a ginger fan, I can tell you that. Coconut oil is another fan, I'm another fan of that too. Coconut oil can be used in so many ways. It can, it's a good uh, omega-3s. We talk a lot about the essential fatty acids and help to give your brain, but it, re it improves recall. The Journal of Neurology and Aging found that just a single dose will help your recall ability. Mm. Um, again, we think about things and we can't remember what it was we were trying to say. Uh, it improves the memory of patients with dementia and Alzheimer's within 90 minutes. Mm. So they did cognitive testing with dementia and Alzheimer patients. They gave them uh, one to three teaspoons of the coconut oil uh, mixed it in some coffee, put it in, um, or just gave it to them straight, and they found that uh, they responded within 90 minutes, they had better testing uh, after, after taking the coconut oil. It provides healthy fats, something called MCTSs, which are fast acting, and will get into the brain. Um, they're really readily absorbed. It takes one to three teaspoons a day. Of the unrefined, Okay, the I'm one refined. that looks like lard. Now mm. that ages me. Not a lot of people don't even know what lard <laughs> looks like, but it's white and chunky. Um, that's the one, the form that is the best form that'll use to improve your memory. You, I like to spread it on my toast instead of butter. Um, you can add in your smoothies, uh, put it in your tea. So there, if you put it in your black tea, then you have a double dose. You get to have two Perfect. ways of improving your mind and your memory. And where should people look? Where should they go to find this unrefined coconut oil? It, obviously, it's at health food stores, but even the major grocery stores, Chief and Kroger, all have it in their health food section. And it comes usually in a glass jar, and again, it's, it's the thickened white uh, form is the one that you want. Okay. Now, why, why are we even having to have these conversations? Why are we Americans in such dire need of these types of things added to our diets? Well, in, in America, we think we're such a healthy nation with a great health care system. And we, there were just recent statistics that came out and to show that we are not. Um, we are number 34 as far as healthiest nations in the world. Number 34. 34. Number 34. Number one is Italy. Yes. Number two is Iceland. Switzerland, Singapore, and Australia are the top five. But yes, United States, number 34, and pretty up there in the world of obesity, too. It's huge. Um, we're always surprised with that. No, the number that we're really good at, Jennifer, is c cost. Hmm. We, we spend more for health care in the United States than any other country in the world, hmm. probably by almost three times as much. Wow. The uh, per capita cost is around $10,000 per person. For us in the United States. In the United States. Whereas in Italy, which is the healthiest nation, um, they spend 3000 a year. So it's, it's a huge difference of what it is. Um, obviously, I think from my perspective that we need to revamp and relook at how we're doing things that maybe uh, all of the prescription drugs in lieu of herbs and lifestyle changes and may not be the way to go. Um, that herbs is the main uh, medical system for 80% of the world. 80% of the world only uses herbs and lifestyle mm -hmm. changes, not drugs. So we're pretty much the primary user of the drugs in our country. The $3.3 trillion a year are spent in the United States on health care. The majority of that goes to hospitals, next to doctors, and then finally to the, the pharmaceutical companies. Wow. So um, it's things that uh, we can change. Uh, one of the things I think, okay, now why do we think that Italy has such a great health system. What are they doing different than we're doing? What do you think? Well, they uh, they live closer to the water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, at least for at least closer than we do here in Ohio. And because of that, they eat more fish. 
and, and fish has essential fatty acids, which we mention a lot, um, are great for the brain. But they have the Mediterranean mm. um, diet, which is based upon the Medi Mediterranean Sea. And with that diet, which is also the diet that the Arthritis Foundation recommends for, for arthro arthritis people, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, if you follow the Mediterranean diet, that you will have less symptoms with your RA. But the big difference there is when we look at on a daily schedule of what you eat in the Mediterranean diet, you eat three fruits a day and you eat three cups of vegetables a day. Now three cups, knowing that a half cup is a serving, would be actually six servings of vegetables and three servings of fruits. So you're getting nine servings of fruits and vegetables mm. every day. The average American does one serving <laughs> of either fruits or vegetables each day. Wow. So that makes a huge difference right there, why they're number one and we are not. They also put a lot of uh, emphasis on olive oil. They have olive oil with two of their meals. So either it's on a salad or they stir fry their vegetables in it. They cook only with the olive oil. And olive oil, besides being an essential fatty acid, also helps the liver and the gallbladder to work better. So now they're eliminating excess estrogens. They're uh, making the liver being able to purify the blood more quickly. Um, so the olive oil is another huge piece of that. They, the red meat's very limited. They do fish three to four times a week, and then otherwise they're doing poultry uh, with their meals. Oh, well, one more time, you can find Bridget's book at any of the locations here on the screen. Thank you again, Bridget, for coming in. Which you, I did mention that her kids were here. They were so well behaved. That was a, a lot of fun to have her entire family here in the studio. And Faith and Friends, that was a fun show as well. You can actually find all of our Faith and Friends episodes on our YouTube channel as well as this show, In the Community. We encourage you to share this and our other In the Community TV special episodes with those in your own network. Just go to the WTLW TV 44 YouTube page to find all the fun, all the encouragement, and much more. And before I go, I just wanna say thank you to those of you who continue to faithfully partner with us financially. The summer months are the leanest in regards to donations, yet our expenses continue Donations can be made anytime at axeministries.com or call 419-339-4444. Stop in at our station Monday through Thursday. I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for joining us on this episode of In the Community.